Hello, welcome back. Today we will contextualize and learn more about how Islam is affecting Western civilization and all the contributions that it is making. One of those ways is through an organization called TED Talks. A woman, very nice, gave a talk which garnered 37 million views and her talk was all about Islamophobia. It seems that she is studying this issue and she is an expert. So we will go through just some of what she had to say. So I hope to reorient you today a little bit in your relation to Islam, especially in relation to recent events. Now she's going to reorient people to Islam. This video is um, eight to 10 years old. However, recent events do include what happened in New York uh, on the 20. 2023 New Year's Eve, as well as many of the incidences that are taking place all around the world. Of course, those recent events will not be mentioned in her video. Talk. So the first thing that's important to understand about Islamophobia is that though it is technically Islamophobia, a religious discourse, it has become racialized over the course of the past 10 or so years. So when we say, or when she says that Islamophobia has become racialized, I'm not understanding that because Islam is a religion, as is Christianity, as is Judaism, as is Baliism, as is Zoroastrianism. So can someone be afraid of an ideology or can someone not um, like this ideology without having it do anything with race? I would have to argue and say absolutely. So again, how has and why have people conflated Islam with race? That in itself is something which civilization seems to have accepted only because it's been repeated, but no one has actually ever made the argument why Islam or this disliking Islam is also disliking the race of Islam because there is no race of Islam. As far as I understood, anyone can become a Muslim and has nothing to do with race. But we'll continue. So when people are, are in, and the way that the Arab-Israeli conflict is the Old Testament <laughs> initiative. And this poster says, So now this girl is talking about the signs that um, some groups are putting up in the New York subway system. These are one of them. We shall cast terror into the hearts of the unbelievers. What she's talking about here now is she's alluding that any religion, you can take the text out of context. That's true. They can be. But it must be acknowledged that if something says what it says, somebody may interpret it to mean what they want it to mean. So if I were to say, go to the store and buy some 2% milk, and you went to the store and you bought 3% milk, did you understand what I asked you to do? For the most part, you did. So here we have a text that says, soon we shall cast terror into the hearts of the unbelievers. What does that mean? It can mean many things, or it can mean exactly what it seems to say it means. But it could mean something else. But then again, many things could. Poster is creating the illusion that Islam is an inherently violent religion. Now here this girl is saying that there's something about uh, people portraying Islam as an inherently violent religion. Well, again, she's not an imam, she's not a sheikh, and she's not a Muslim. So we will listen to somebody who actually is a Muslim and hear what he, Suleiman ben Garza, what does he have to say on this subject? Let us listen. There was a time when this area that we call Turkey, there was no Muslims, there was no Islam, right? And then people came, and in Turkey in particular, it was not a result of merchants coming with da'wah. It was a result of jihad. Muslim came, people became Muslim as a, as a result of the fact that Muslims came with the sword, established Sharia, 
and as a result of the establishment of Sharia, many people found that there's a need to become Muslims in order to avoid fitna. You are happy that your forefathers would happen. They accepted Islam even though they may, it may have been under the sword, right? Well, okay, so here now we understand that this Imam, who knows a bit more about Islam than this very nice girl, says that Islam was established with the sword. What this girl has not taken into account, and many of the younger generations and of many generations seem to forget that Constantinople, which was part of the Byzantine Empire, was forcibly tr uh, transitioned from a Christian nation into an Islamic nation. Could that be, cons and as we just hear, it was done by the, with the sword. Some would say that that is an admission of it being a violent takeover. Again, this girl is under the impression that Islam is, not, is a non-violent religion, it seems. We'll go to another section here. Did most... Uh, is exhibited the best in the main character of Brody, Sergeant Brody, who returns. That is uh, depicting. In actuality, however, this is what Hamra really looks like. People tuned in to watch the season two premiere of Homeland. That's 1.72 million people who learned that Islam is a violent religion and who learned that Islamic terrorism is all around us. This is quite dangerous. Because it is quite dangerous. But the question becomes, what is quite dangerous? And is this very nice girl in a position at the age of 25 or 30 to be giving life lessons on what is and what is not dangerous? When it regards um, different ideologies, such as the religion of Islam. So for that, we will go to Imam Yasser Qadi, who, according to Time magazine, is one of the 100 most influential Muslims Imams in North America. Let us listen to what he has to say. This is and is the principle of Tawheed. The life and property of a mushrik holds no value in the state of jihad. Make notice I said in the state of jihad, not at all times and places. The life and property of a mushrik becomes halal while in a state of jihad. The Prophet ﷺ said, and we quoted the hadith before, I have been commanded to fight the people until they say, La ilaha illallah. And when they say, La ilaha illallah, he went on, when they say, La ilaha illallah, their life and property become protected from me. Which means if they don't say, La ilaha illallah, their life and property are halal for the Muslims. So the Christians do commit shirk. They are, they are kuffar and they are mushrikun. The mushrikun are najis, they are filthy. Well, I'm not sure what I need to add here, except this is a form of otherizing, definitely. They're saying that Christians are filthy, and their life and their property, if they don't uh, submit to Islam, are halal, so that anyone can then take them because they're not protected by the Muslim state. Again, this seems to go against very much what this very nice girl is telling us, and she is, I'm sure, a very nice girl, uh, but she's somewhat confused. Or is she being naive? Either way, what we have to understand is that there are so many complexities and contextualizations that need to take place. If you would like to learn more, if you would like to be involved in helping us and helping everybody um, and helping us to fight the irrational fears that are associated with Islamophobia, which is exactly what this girl is doing. So subscribe to this channel, like this video, and you can help us to help them, to help everyone understand that when we eliminate the irrational fears of Islamophobia, we make the world a better place.